apologies in advance for anything Tim did to <laughs> gr grieve the Lord or any lies he spoke about me. Did he do okay? He's quite a guy. He's he's um, he's one of the best. He is. He's one of the best. I want to just say thanks for this opportunity and thank you, Jane, for your kind words and thank all of you for being such. Um, I don't want to say skilled, but maybe I will say skilled, mature hosts of the presence of the Lord. And um, it's a pleasure to, to get to come and do this on the heels of something so strong. So thank you for doing that. I believe we're uh, under an assignment tonight. I know I'm obviously under an assignment to, to bring a message, but I believe the Lord wants us to sort of, you know, maybe jump back into that place we were in a while ago at the end of the message and, and carry something for him in the spirit. So I feel like my role is to uh, prepare us for that. Before I do move into the message, let me just say that Cece sends her love and greetings to all of you. She's probably watching if she is. I love you and they're all just, they all love you, Cece. They, they tolerate me, they love Cece. So, uh, you know, Sometimes I find myself thinking, I don't know that we could be in a more strategic uh, time on earth than what we are in. Uh, we, we find ourselves at a, a place where uh, it's almost like that book that said it was the best of times and worst of times, you know. It's, because we're about to advance in ways that uh, we've been interceding for for decades. And yet the opposition is tremendous. And it's like Paul said, there's a great effectual door open, but there are many adversaries. And of course, we know the Lord will ultimately win. Uh, we also know that different points along the way uh, the timing of that victory is sometimes determined by his people not that he's caught off guard I don't believe that for a minute but you know for example when Israel came out of Egypt and God had to wait and do it through the next generation I don't think that took him by surprise but I but I do think it pictures for us the fact that God does work through people and he has to have an appropriate response from his people. And if he doesn't get it, he just, in his heart and mind, has said, I'll do it through the next generation. I can confidently say, I don't believe we are a generation that is going to miss our opportunity. And I don't think he's gonna have to bypass us and go to the next generation. I don't believe that. If you follow me on the 15 posts, then you, thank you. <clears throat> then you know what I believe. I believe America will be saved. And I believe the greatest harvest in all of history is, it has already begun and that we're moving into it. And the more that I do what I do, the more convinced I am that really everything that he is doing with this nation is about the nations, plural. It's not about us per se, it's about what he wants to use us to do. 
We are not just to be the most powerful. We are to be the greatest serving nation on the earth. But we're going to, God's going to, he's going to prevail in this hour. And uh, I think I was going to read a passage, but I think I'll save that and come back to it later and maybe just paraphrase it. Get myself organized here. You know, about two years ago, the Lord began speaking to prophets more than he had before through dreams. And uh, some people, obviously, uh, you guys know that. Some people don't like it, but God just seems to, to do it anyway. <laughs> but I, some of the people that send me dreams are four or five prophets that... Uh, fairly regularly send me dreams. Some are for me to help me navigate through what I'm to do. Some are, are, are a little broader in, in their uh, message for the, the church at large. But they will say, they would say that it was as though the Lord just flipped a switch they used to dream once in a while. They used to dream dreams that were much shorter and not as detailed. And It was as though one day they just stepped into a new realm. And what I believe is that the, the prophetic and apostolic anointings went to another level. But um, they, some of, at times they are, they are surprised at their own dreams, the uh, details, their ability to remember them. I have one brother, and I'm going to talk about a dream he sent me. Uh, I'm going to talk about that dream tonight. He said to me, I never really preach on, from my dreams. I just send them to you. <laughs> That's what he said. See, I feel like God gives them uh, to me to send to you. And you do with him what he tells you to do. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting time. And I'm going to talk about the baseball dream a little bit tonight. And I always know by the response one way or the other. Who's telling the truth when they say they follow me on the post? Because when I hear that sound that I just heard, I know, yeah, they've heard this. So, But on January 2nd of this year, this dream came, and it was for 2022. And I'm doing it tonight because I'm not going to share a lot of details regarding the first part of the dream. But we came to believe that this dream was laying out several strategies for us regarding 2022. In fact, there were four batters uh, in the dream, and we believe that each batter represented a different quarter of the year. I'm doing this tonight because I feel this fourth quarter is incredibly strategic. And I believe we will play a role tonight in tipping the scales. Let me say this, ladies, and I'm saying this to those of you here, and I'm saying it to many watching. There is no place, no group of people I would feel any more confident being with to pick up this word tonight and do with it what the Lord wants to do. I believe this ministry has been raised up for such a time as this. I believe you know how to pray. I believe you move with Holy Spirit. I believe you have faith. I believe you have authority. I believe you have been established as a corporate group of people at a very high level of wisdom revelation authority I believe we can accomplish much tonight so let me summarize the first 
three quarters and the beginning of the dream as quickly as I can to get us to this last quarter. So it was a baseball game, the last game of a World Series of sorts. It was called the World Sears Series, S-E-E-R-S. Our team was called Kingdom Ecclesia. We were playing the Kingdom of Darkness. The game, this was the final game and it was the eighth inning. And for those of you that don't follow baseball, there, there are nine innings. This was the eighth inning of the final game. We were playing in Washington, D.C. in our home stadium called Royal Stadium. Don't miss the fact that we were the home team. It's the powers of darkness that are the visitors. This nation belongs to the Lord. And he will have it. The score was 20 to 22. We were leading 20 to 22. We knew the dream was about 2022. When we came up to bat in this eighth inning, I, I was the coach. The man who had the dream, Greg Hood, was the assistant coach. He functions more in the prophetic anointing. I function more in the apostolic teaching anointing. Obviously, the, 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 the mantles, the callings, the anointings overlap somewhat, but but I was coaching and I changed the batting order in the eighth inning. I'm gonna probably talk in the morning about the new order that I see coming in the church. Some did not like the fact that I changed the batting order. There was a lot of tension at this point. Everybody knew what was at stake. Uh, this was, it was all coming to a head and this was, this was the crucial time that would decide who won this. So they didn't like that I messed with the order, but I changed the batting order. Sent the first batter to the plate I'm not going to go, oh, there's so much in this dream. It's just packed with details. Every time I read it, I just think, Lord, this is just incredible. But the first batter's assignment was to hit the ball as hard as he could down the first baseline and take out the first baseman. And of course, these are spirits in the dream, not people. So he did. The numbers on the back of all the batters were significant. They weren't a one-digit or two-digit number as typically uh, they typically would be, but they were four numbers. They represented words from Strong's Concordance. This batter's number is the number of the word that means to encounter or meet. It's not the word for intercession, but it means the same thing as paga, the word for intercession. So what prayer needed to do through this first batter was to take out the first baseman. So he hit it as hard as he could, hit the first baseman in the, in the head and decapitated him. Spirit, a spirit, not a person. We're not against people. And that is symbolic. These, oh, this dream is in, it's totally symbolic. So it's headship. It's authority. It's not that God's saying we're going to kill somebody. It's the head, ra, ah, in Hebrew that represents headship. Somebody's gonna, somebody has to deal with the authority of that person so that we can get a base runner on and start this process in this inning. So we felt that first baseman, God gave us other insights, dreams, words. We felt like it represented the spirit of religion. And God said, remove the authority from that spirit in this nation. So we went to five cities, six, including Washington, D.C., covert prayer trips, 
small group where God showed us to go to deal with the root of religion. Form without power. That which refuses to accept Holy Spirit and his gifts and his works and his power. That which brings religious ritual but not intimacy. So we believe in the first quarter God enabled us to do that. The second quarter, the second batter, the assignment represented reversing Roe v. Wade. It's not that the battle, the, the, the victory, and the prayer began in January of this year. It's that God was saying to us, this must be finished. And we knew through a series of, <clears throat> excuse me, word studies and prayer for weeks, uh, we knew that God was saying the emphasis in the second quarter must be the verdict rendered to reverse Roe versus Wade. And we made it with a week to spare last week of June which really set the stage for everything else even though abortion is still legal and it's been given to the state level now the national decree from our national government has been reversed and broken. And now God can deal with it at lower levels. But it lifted a curse. Now the enemy is fighting to obviously keep this blood sacrifice in place. Baal feeds off of the blood of the babies. But it was, it was significant and huge that that was dealt with. The, the, I knew all these people in the dream. I'm not giving you their names, but I'll give you the third batter for the third quarter. Uh, the name was Jane Hammond. Jane's a, a prophetic voice. Most of you know who she is, maybe all of you. Her number on her jersey was the number for the word Jesus used in John 15, 14, 15, 16, specifically chapter 16, when he said it is to your advantage or expedient for you that I leave. Sumphero is a word that means to bring two or more things together. And when they come together, it creates a benefit leading to an advantage. Obviously, we know what Jesus was saying, but the disciples, I'm sure, were aghast. They, you, know, you couldn't live day and night with Jesus for three years and be excited when he said, I'm leaving. <laughs> and you would have to think it was one of the most preposterous things you'd ever heard to hear him say, it's actually better for you if I go. But what he was saying, as we know, is that Holy Spirit will come without a physical body. And so he will be able to be in you and with all of you all the time. And he will carry the same anointing, the same uh, abilities, power that I have only it'll be multiplied because he'll be with all of you all at once. The revelation of, uh, in that is it's just almost too, too big to get your arms around the significance of that. I'm going to be in all of you in the person of Holy Spirit. So that was her number. 
The word expedient in the King James Version comes from the Latin word ped, which is the word for foot or feet. We get the word pedicure from it. Literally, the word he used there means to unfetter the feet. The opposite would be to impede, and the word ped in that is the same root word. To hinder the feet, or entrap, or weigh down, or shackle the feet. Jesus was saying, when he comes, he's going to unshackle your feet. You're gonna, all that the enemy has been doing to keep you from running, making progress, is going to be reversed when Holy Spirit comes because he will be your advantage and he's going to do for you, in you, through you what you could never do. And he's gonna unshackle your feet so you could run. In that third quarter is a picture of what Holy Spirit has already begun to do. The enemy, the opposing team became agitated. They became confused, irritated. We began to do strategies that took them by surprise, things they weren't expecting. I could go into detail, not necessarily, but necessary, but through those strategies, we loaded the bases. Eighth inning, final game, bases loaded, nobody out. And that's where I want to get. As we were watching this, a phone rang in our dugout. Dutch answered it. We could see him looking up and behind home plate into one of the sky boxes as he talked on the phone. He was speaking to the team owner. Don't have to be all that prophetic, do you, to know that the <laughs> owner in the skybox might be the Lord. <laughs> he calls the dugout. And he says, Dutch, I want you to pinch hit. Now, I have known for two years now with these dreams that come so frequently that most of the time when, it, when I'm in a dream, it's not primarily referring to me but to the people I represent, the praying church. That's been my calling for 30 years, to write on prayer, to teach on prayer. That's why God led me into the revelation of Ecclesia because he, he began to expand my understanding that we are to do more than petition, we are to decree. We are the legislative governing body of Christ on the earth with authority to bind and loose, kingdom keys, to say yes, to say no. There is a people arising now with that understanding and it's changing everything. And it's not just America. Millions of people around the world are grabbing this revelation, probably more in other nations, frankly, possibly than here even in America. Are, are, are realizing what it means to be the church, that we have been given the authority of Jesus himself to legislate for him on planet earth. Not to dictate, not to, be, be, to rule by force, but to rule in the spirit and free people from the demonic control, to free regions from demonic control so their hearts can be turned, so their eyes can be opened, so they can see and understand and come to Jesus. We are not binding people, we are binding spirits. We are not warring against flesh and blood. We are warring against evil powers of darkness. That's what I represent. So actually, it's you. Pinch it. Easy to interpret that. Ecclesia. Prayer movement. Intercessors. Apostolic prophetic company in the earth. I have been preparing you for something. Now it's time to bat. It's time to step up to the plate. It's time to step into the role for which I created you. 
Heaven is calling the dugout saying, it, get your bat ready, it's your turn. I've loaded the bases for you. Now you're gonna bat. The coach and catcher from the other team went to the pitcher's mound and began speaking with the pitcher. We could tell there was much disagreement among them. Confusion had come to the ranks of the enemy. Just like you see right now. They're confused and disoriented. Some of them literally. <clears throat> Have you ever seen such chaos and confusion in your, and sad, you know, just, but just things that 15, 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, you, you would say, this could never happen. But here they are. It seemed that the pitcher, he said in the dream, he realized the pitcher really has all the authority here. He has more authority than the coach. We'll see why in a minute. He said to me on the phone, we have an opportunity. This is the coach. This is God talking to us. We have an opportunity here to not only win the game, but to win big. And by the way, I'm not talking about the elections. Although, yes, that's a part of it. But I am not leading up to prayer for the elections, although if we go there, that's fine. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not, this is not for that. Although we, we need to pray into that. But he said, you have an opportunity now to win. And not only to win, but to win big. See, what God's about to do is he's not going to send us a little movement that makes a little bit of impact here and around the world. God is about to shake the nations of the earth with his kingdom power and authority. God is about to send a tidal wave of his spirit around the world. God is about to bring hundreds of millions of people, a billion, maybe two, into his kingdom over the next decade, two, three. <clears throat> the earth has never seen what God is about to do. The earth has never seen anything like it. And he is saying to us, not only do you have the opportunity to win right now, you have the opportunity to win big. Then he said to me in the dream, Dutch, now in, let me just preface this by saying, up to this point in time, we didn't, even though we knew the names of batters and players on Kingdom Ecclesia, we did not know any names on the other team, and it's because it wasn't people, it was demons. It was, it was against the powers of darkness. So we didn't know any names. He said, Dutch, You know this pitcher. You know him. He's lost big games before. He's not what he's made himself out to be. Be patient. Don't be distracted at what he will throw at you. He wants to get your eyes off the pennant. The pennant is the flag that they give the winner of Champ, the championship, it's the championship banner in baseball, pennant. He wants, you, he, wants, he wants to distract you from that. And he said, you know this pitcher. And he's lost some big games before. When he, he, when he walked up to me in just a moment here in the dream, he walked up to me and he put his face close to mine. And he said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to destroy you. You'll never make it out of this alive. He turned and walked back to the pitcher's mound. We saw the name on the back of his jersey as 
Zephon, Z-E-P-H-O-N. Baal, Zephon. Baal, uh, Zephon, this spirit was nowhere on my radar until a year ago, a year and a half ago now. But Baal was. Baal has, gave himself several names in the Old Testament. So as they worshiped the Baals, whatever they were looking for from that God, which was really just a demon, it would take, they would give it specific names, like Baal was the Baal Barat, the God of covenant or master of covenant. Baal Hamon, the God of wealth, he would give you wealth. And so as we give Yahweh different names, they gave Baal different names. You don't hear much about this name of Baal in the Old Testament. The first time you hear it is in Exodus 14 at the Red Sea. Because when God exposed to Egypt and to Israel in the Exodus that the gods of Egypt, the Baals, were false gods. Each of the ten plagues was a judging of one of those gods of Egypt, Baals. But there was one Baal that he didn't judge in the Exodus until Exodus 14. This was when Israel had passed a certain portion of the sea and as they passed it they came to a point where God said turn around and go back and told Moses exactly where to go and he said I want you to camp at this spot on the edge of the sea across from this mountain where there is a high place where Baal Zephon is honored. Baal Zephon was the god of the seas, the god of the winds, the god of the north, the, the strong, fierce god. This was his place of honor, the high place. He told Moses, go back there. It looked like to the natural eye, natural mind, that Moses and the Israelites were confused, wandering aimlessly, disoriented, past it, come back. And when they came back, the place where they camped had led the, the, the journey to that spot led them into a trap. They were hemmed in by a mountain, the wilderness, the sea, and Pharaoh's army coming. This is why they began to complain to Moses, saying, you let us out here to, be, to destroy us. We'd have been better off to stay in Egypt. Pharaoh looked at this and decided, finally, one of my gods is proving himself stronger than their god, Yahweh. My god, Zephon, has led them into a trap. He is now going to give my enemies into my hand. This is why, and because he was the God of the sea and the wind, this is why when the wind came and rolled back the sea, they were willing to chase the Israelites into the sea because Pharaoh believed it was his God, Zephon, who was doing this. He led them into a trap. He's now trapping them in this path is this place where the sea rolled back and now I have my opportunity to take them and so God led Israel into a trap not interesting because he wanted to trap Zephon and Pharaoh and of course his plan all along was to deal with this final Baal Revealing to Egypt that he is God. Last year in July, I went to Nashville and the Lord 
the Lord sovereignly spoke to Cece and me and said, go to Nashville to this conference. We don't go to a lot of conferences. We're very busy. When I don't have a meeting where I'm speaking, I usually don't go. We stay home. But he said, go. So we went. And while I was there, just to uh, be a part of it, not, not to speak, but just to observe and just receive, he began speaking to me from this passage. And he said, in essence, I have brought you back to Nashville because of the call that took place here on 777, where the process began of divorcing Baal in this nation. Making a declaration through intercession and a solemn assembly, repentance, intercession, that we and we as a remnant are doing this, but we are doing it intercessorily for the nation. We are saying to Baal, we will no longer allow this nation to be married to you. One of the meanings, by the way, of the word Baal is husband. And his name, Baal Bareth, Lord of Covenant. He tried to get Israel to break their covenant with the Lord and, as it were, divorce him and align with, uh, divorce Yahweh and align with him and marry him. And so God was saying, 777 call was about America divorcing Baal and remarrying the Lord. Probably some of you were there. 70,000 people. And God said to me, I'm now going to finish what I started in 2007. And I have allowed you to be backed into a place of where it looks like you're trapped and there's no way out. Because I want this nation to know that it cannot save itself. This nation must know that it will only be through my help and my power that this turning, this saving takes place. So he took me there and he led me to this passage. And honestly, I don't ever, ever remember having thought about the name Zephon. I read right through that part of the verse and got to the exciting part where the sea rolls back, just like you did. <laughs> and then this dream came in January. And Zephon, Baal, Zephon said, I'm going to take you out. This is my game and my series, and I'm going to win it. He began to throw wild pitches. He threw one pitch. It was so crazy wild, it went over the stadium wall and out into the parking lot. And the umpire called it a strike. <laughs> because the umpires were working with the powers of darkness. And he threw another pitch and it went into the dugout and hit one of the coaches on our team. And the umpire said strike two. And it was almost as though in the dream God had been waiting for the cup of iniquity for these umpires to be filled as he finally moved upon me and I turned to the umpire and I said you are no longer allowed to call this game Michael will take your place <laughs> the umpire had a white coat on with the 
symbol of a pharmacist. Obviously not referring to natural pharmacists being bad, but a play on words, pharmakia, the Greek word for sorcery and witchcraft in the New Testament. And so God was saying to us, listen to me very carefully here, the witchcraft, the sorcery, the demonic activity that has been aiding, that has been working to give the powers of darkness victory, distorting things, changing the rules, influencing people in the wrong way, making calls that are not appropriate. He is saying to us, it is time now. We, we have come to a place where we can break the power of that, that sorcery and witchcraft off of this nation and see its hold broken and the forces of God not only the ecclesia, but the angelic hosts of heaven helping us. The week we moved into this fourth quarter, the fourth batter, where we, God finally identified Zephon and said, and expelled these guys, is, was that week that God gave Tim an encounter and a dream and visitation where he said, I'm sending the seraphim to help the church now. He may have talked about that here. And he specifically referenced Michael. And in this dream, I said, you are no longer allowed to do this and Michael will take your place. There have been three, this is the third time, there have been two other times in my ministry where God has sent me on prayer assignments when I knew I was partnering with the Archangel Michael. Both of them have been assignments that had national significance. Turning points in the nation key critical times when just as he did with Daniel and just as he did in Revelation 12 he sent Michael and I'm sure Michael brought some help although I'm not sure he needed it but I I just I want, I want to bring into your focus now that God has sent us the help we need in this hour. Yes. Holy Spirit has come. He is our advantage now. He is going to enable us to uh, run with unfettered. He's enabling us to accomplish what we need to accomplish. No matter what the enemy throws at us, He's saying, you know this enemy. He's lost big games before. Don't be distracted by anything he throws at you or anything the enemy does. You have reached a place of understanding, revelation, authority. You know who you are. You know what I have called you to do and called you to be. You do not have to waver. You do not have to back up. You do not have to shut up. You do not have to sit down. You do not have to give this thing away any longer. You don't have to lose by default. You know who you are. You know what you can do. Now you're going to pick up the bat and you're going to take care of this thing. Now, when I walked from the dugout to go to the plate, home plate to bat, I said to Greg in the dream, give me my bat. He walked over and and removed it from a box that said communion. <laughs> Covenant and intimacy. Worship, intimacy, exalting him. The blood of the lamb. We overcome by the blood. 
and the word of our testimony, our decree and testimony of the blood. That which, that through which, because I did take out Baal, but I'll get to that in a minute, but the, ba- the, the weapon, the, the instrument that was used to take him out was, was not noise. It wasn't even just determination. It wasn't our gifts. It wasn't our strength. It wasn't a sermon. It was our connection this way, through the blood of the Lamb, the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. It would say, we come to you in the name of the Lord. You come with your, with your, uh, sh- with your sword and with your spear and your great uh, weapons, but we come in the name of the Lord. And he took, so he took the bat out of the communion box. And then the bat had written on it, Ephesians 1, 17. Spirit of wisdom and revelation. There will be wisdom, the wisdom needed in this hour to do what we need to do. There will be the revelation needed in this hour to deliver what we need to deliver to the enemy. We will know what to do and how to do it. We will know what to do and when to do it. We will know what to do and what not to do and when not to do. We are not at the mercy. We are not at the mercy of our own understanding only. We are not at the mercy of the enemy. We are not at the mercy of ourselves. We have Holy Spirit. He is our advantage now. We have communion. We have the blood of the Lamb. We have intimacy with Him. We have worship. We have the spirit of wisdom and revelation operating, I believe, at the highest level on planet Earth that it's ever operated. Not because of that we're better than the early church, but because of the numbers, but because of what God has done for the, uh, in the last 2,000 years. So... He hands me my bat. And I said, what should I do? Where should I hit it? He said, go for the throat. Hit it as hard as you can for his throat and take out his voice. Remove his voice. And then he said to me, this really been messing with me for the entire year. If you hit the mark, it'll change the game. Go for the throat, take out his voice. And if you hit the mark, hit the mark. Paga, the Hebrew word for intercession. He's not saying you have to be so precise You have to be able to hit that baseball right there. We're just like David. David could have slung that stone anywhere. It's going to find the forehead of that. That's that's my theology. It was spirit-led. If you, if you do what you are, just... Hit, just if you will paga, if you will pray, if you will hit the mark. Yeah. Are you following me? Yeah. The word paga, the Hebrew word for intercession, one of the meanings is hit the mark. It's a word still today in target practice in Israel. If they hit a bullseye, they say paga. Isn't that fascinating, the word for intercession? The very word means you're going to hit the mark. The very word means bullseye. The very word means to me, if you take the bat of communion with Ephesians 1:17 on it and get up there and just hit the ball, I will cause it to paga. Hit the mark. So I don't hear this as Holy Spirit saying, if you're good enough, 
It'll change the game. It'll change this nation. That's what the game is about. It changed the nation, which is going to change the nations. He's not saying if you're good enough, if, you're, if you hit it perfectly enough, he's saying, if you will just do what I've taught you to do, it's going to change this game. Praying church, intercessors, ecclesia, Holy Spirit, has come he's our advantage the angels are with us now Michael was on high alert we've been taught what we need to know not that we know it all but we understand enough to do this he says if you do it in this fourth quarter if my people will pray do what I tell them to do in that, in that context of intercession. I'm going to break this stronghold of Baal off of this nation. Why do you think this spirit is going nuts in America right now? Baal is the spirit behind abortion. I know it's Molech, but in the, in the Baal system, Molech was under Baal. Baal, is, Baal demanded blood sacrifice. Baal is the spirit behind abortion and murder. Baal's the spirit behind the castrating of our children. It's Baal right now that is creating such violence and anger in this nation. This spirit is intimidated. He's walked off the mound and come face to face with the church and said, you are not going to win this. I ruled this nation for 60 years and you're not going to do this. And we need to do just what I did in the dream. It's not about me. I just said, go back to the mound. Because I'm here, and this is what, I'm here to uncover you. I'm here to expose you. We are going to remove the voice of this spirit it is, the, it is the final work of liberating a nation and turning us back. This is what is going to be the final uh, act of God that releases this third great awakening. 2023 is a new experience. I'm not, I know the enemy is not going to roll over and play dead. But it won't, it's not going to matter what he does if we continue to do what God tells us to do. We're just going to reap. We're going to see the miracles. We're going to see the deliverances. We're going to see him lose his voice. Don't him to distract you he said he's trying to get your eyes off the pennant what would the pennant what would the championship be for us it's not taking out Baal the, the victory the championship for, for us is the glory of God being released it's the, it's the gospel of the kingdom going forth and doing what it wants to do it's the third great awakening it's the it's the destiny of America, yes, being re recovered and recaptured, but it's because the destiny of America is all about this harvest. And God's going to get this done. It's not God's will. It's not God's will for Russia to rule the world or China. It's not God's will for that to happen. It's not God's will for this harvest to be lost. I get the worship team to come up, please. Now, I've been doing this long enough. 
to know better than to stand up here at this point and say we're going to have a screaming match with demons. Hey, I, I matured past that a long time ago. I understand what, that our victory is simply to declare who he is. And our strength is in the name of the Lord. It's not in how loud we can get. It's not, it's not to uh, shout out at demons. It's to decree the victory of the Lord Jesus, the power of the cross, the blood of the Lamb. It's the communion covenant box. It's the spirit of wisdom revelation. It's intimacy with him. That's what's going to take out the voice of this spirit. That's what's going to deal the final blow at the Red Sea when it looks like the enemy is in complete control. And God's going to say, I'm going to show you who's the God of the sea and the wind. If you would just sing that last song again that you did in the worship set, and then I'm going to lead us in some decrees. Why don't we stand and worship for just a few minutes? Lord, we thank you for your great mercy. We thank you. You're a God who delights in mercy. We don't talk you into mercy. We come to your throne of grace to obtain mercy. Find grace to help in times of need. And you said mercy, your mercy triumphs over judgment. And when you could have written off this nation, cancel the plan, from rejecting you rebelling against you aligning ourselves with this evil spirit in your great love and mercy you chose raised up a people that would humble themselves and pray and millions not thousands millions of prayers of repentance have gone up in this nation over the last 30 to 40 years millions of prayers of repentance over our covenant breaking our shedding of innocent blood, our injustices. And you came, Lord, and you came. You visited me with an angel in front of the White House who delivered that very word to me and a few others there that day. Mercy, 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 mercy. I am giving this nation mercy. You gave the dream the angel carrying the scroll into the halls of our Congress that shouted, the verdict has been rendered. America shall be saved. That was your word, not my word. You are determined to have this nation back. You are determined to to use this nation as a beacon and as a trumpet in this hour. You are determined to bring forth this great worldwide harvest and you will not be defeated by Baal, Baal Zephon or Lucifer himself. You have already determined the outcome. And so we stand boldly before you today, stretching out the scepter the staff 
rep that Moses held out representing your authority. We extend your authority over this water right now, over this sea. We extend it toward the high place where this false God is worshipped. We extend the name of the Lord. We say the Lord himself will determine who is the God of the wind and the sea. We say to the witchcraft and the sorcery that has ruled this nation through the shedding of innocent blood that the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb is taking place in our nation and you are no longer allowed to rule this game. We break your hold, witchcraft. We break your hold, sorcery. We ask you, Father, if he's not here already, let this be the night then that you send Michael and his forces into this nation to begin to go to work. I believe he's already here, but just in case, would you send him? Make sure he's here. Call on the, call on the balls and strikes. We want him to take charge in the heavens. We want he and his hosts to take over. We want the battle in the heavenlies to be overseen by Michael himself. We're picking up the communion bat. We're picking up our salvation and our position at the right hand of the Father with Jesus. We're picking it up through the blood of the Lamb, the blood covenant of Jesus Christ that has called us up to be with Him. We sit there with Him, with His authority, with His name, with His strength, with His kingdom government. We take that scepter say it is not by might or power of man but it is by your spirit we take up the spirit of wisdom and revelation we allow the great one holy spirit to operate through us and be released from us even now he is our advantage holy spirit you are our advantage you are in this place you're in every one of us you're all across this nation. You are our victory. You are our strength. You're unfettering the feet of the church. You're picking us up out of the quagmire, the miry clay, the deception, the lethargy, the compromise, the deception, the compromise, the apathy. You're breaking it off of the church. are coming to awaken the church. We say, Lord, you're in charge of this battle. You're the God of the sea and the wind. You're the God of the nations. You own every square inch of this planet. You own every square inch of America. You are ruler over the nations. Your son has been given authority, all authority in heaven and in earth. We wield his name right now. We say the blood of Jesus breaks the hold of this spirit off of America. power we say through that we will not only win we will win big 
You will win big. You will win big through us. We just call forth now the wind of heaven, the rushing mighty wind of Holy Spirit to blow across this nation and ultimately to all the nations, every continent. We say from the east, up the east coast, down the east coast, up and down the east coast, fire, 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 fire. From Florida, all the way up to Maine, everywhere in between. We say across this nation to the west, the northern border and up into Canada and the southern border, all the way over into Mexico, to the west coast and up and down the west coast. We say there will be a great revival in Washington State, Oregon State, and California. Stop it. We boldly say what you said. Yours is the kingdom. Kingdom, dominion, authority. You are the king of the domain. Planet Earth. It's your kingdom. You rule, you have all authority. Your kingdom rule come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We command your kingdom influence, dominion, come. Your will be done. Come on, call out the name of your state. Let's make sure we get all 50. We say kingdom come to South Carolina. Kingdom come to Texas. Kingdom come to St. Louis. Kingdom come to Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska, the heartland, Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, New Mexico, Idaho, Montana, Wisconsin, Colorado, Texas, Louisiana, Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Missouri, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa. Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C. Kingdom come, we'll be done. We release the third great awakening to come. We say 2023 will be a year of great harvest. Signs and wonders, miracles, great deliverances. The spirit of deliverance beginning to invade this land, delivering those who are bound, who are deceived, who are oppressed. Signs and wonders of unseen levels. Creative, 
extraordinary miracles extraordinary discernment words of knowledge wisdom gifts of faith workings of miracles healings prophetic evangelism fire on the campuses fire the fire of awakening and revival spirit of revelation the spirit of unveiling the spirit of eyes opening the prophetic anointing of God lifting the veil off of the nation bringing down strongholds under this system Strongholds that have worked their way into government, media, education, even the church, and the dismantling of the religious spirit and the marrying of the political and religious spirit, and the breaking down of the system, the networks of evil, of witchcraft, of occult structures over this nation. We say the blood of Jesus is annihilating you now. The cross, the power of the cross is being released against you even now. You sit there at the sea, the Red Sea, that you would be glorified. We're asking you at the point where it looks like the enemy has become so entrenched that there's no way out of this, that you come and glorify yourself. Our history will say it was nothing any person did. It was nothing any group of people did. It was nothing any organization, denomination did. It was this incredible orchestration of Holy Spirit doing what only He can do. We say, Lord, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're going to invade the church as well as the secular realm. You're going to bring fire to the pulpits of America again. You're going to descend into gatherings and begin to pour out your spirit. The rushing mighty wind and the tongues of fire are coming. Complacency, apathy, lukewarmness, compromise, deception, heresy. These things will be broken off of millions of people. Leaders that have lost their first love will be reclaimed by you. They will once again burn with holy fire. And a movement that has even now begun will be so out of control, it will only be under your control. Nothing else will stop or control what is coming. So we declare now the dismantling of the evil covering darkness, of the Baal structure, of the deception that, has, that it has brought, the violence, the bloodshed, the evil that it has brought. We decree now over our land that that system is now being annihilated by the Spirit of God and the angels of heaven and the decrees of the ecclesia 
and the mercy of God to those who most align themselves with you and to give disfavor to those who least align themselves with you and your ways and your will but we see that as a part of the bigger picture not the end goal yes we want a government that's righteous that serves you just as we want a media that tells the truth but our focus is on you and the kingdom of heaven these things we want simply to be an extension of your gracious will and word and ways and salvation in the earth but having said that we do come into agreement and we bind every work of darkness that would try to interfere with it and deceive and steal and cause turmoil and we say no to you you have no voice in this spoke to me a year or so ago, maybe two years ago. He said, there are many prodigals that I have chosen not to bring back in yet. I've protected them. I'm keeping them. But I have not brought them back because I know what I want to bring them into and what I don't want them to come into. I want them to step into the outpouring of my spirit, not a religious system and structure. But I know it's time, and I want us to conclude this prayer time, unless Jane has wants to take it someplace else. I want you to begin to call your prodigals back into Father's house because this is the season now where it's going to, you watch 2023, the year of the prodigal beginning to run home to Father's house. Come on, come on, call them in. Call them by name. Break the powers of darkness off of their mind. Release revelation to them. Command that they would come to their senses as the prodigal in Scripture did. Break off of them spirits of deception, darkness, perversion, confusion, rejection, religion, drugs, alcohol. We call you out of the pig pens of the earth. We say, come to your senses. You are not allowed to live there anymore. You must come home to Father's house. You must. Come on, pray in the spirit for just a minute. 